Everyone wants to create a progress bar in FileMaker, but honestly, I've never shipped one in a finished product. The main reason is everything is fast in FileMaker. If it isn't fast, most likely the solution is designed incorrectly. There are exceptions, of course, if you're migrating data from one solution to another and there's a lot of data. Yeah, maybe you want to put up a progress bar because it's going to take a while for it to import that stuff. Uh, but there's very few exceptions. Most cases, progress bars are really kind of just fancy little things. Um, and, you know, you have to charge your client for them. And I just generally don't do them. So uh, what we're going to do is cover, you know, these. But keep that in mind. I'm going to show you three different methods of progress bars. Well, really four different methods. But two of them are very similar. But keep that in mind when you're looking at these that, you know, do you really need a progress bar? And even if you don't need one, you still want to learn how to do it because you can learn a lot from these techniques. So I think they're pretty cool. So let's run them real quick to see how they run. So here's the one that runs with set field and puts pipes, the pipe character from the keyboard, into a global field. And there's two versions of the progress bar. There's a realistic one that kind of goes in chunks. And I show that one because that's really what yours is most likely going to look like. Here's a consistent progress bar done with conditional formatting. Now the big advantage here is that you don't have any issues with cross-platform fonts. And frankly, you could have issues within the same platform as well. Two different computers could have two different versions of the same font and then the, you know, the font won't look quite right uh, up here with the, you know, the pipes. So with the conditional formatting, just a little button here that we're just turning on and off as far as color and that, you know, won't have any issue to look perfectly the same cross platform. We can even put a little rectangle around it. And then there's the realistic version just to see it chunk across there. And you can see the script is, you know, paused here and, and cycling through and looping uh, as we do that. Now here's one I created with the bar chart, and I really like this one. And you can see it's got a percentage here. You can see again the script is paused and continuing here. You've got the tick marks 0 to 100. It's pretty cool what you can do with this. And the great thing is you can, with all the colors you can, you know, that are available, you can change how it looks very quickly, much quickly, uh, more quickly than the other methods. Well, actually, this one's pretty easy to change to the pipes. Just the conditional formatting can throw in a few, uh, few problems for you. The other issue about the chart is that actually the background's this big, so it doesn't fit uh, in as small a space as uh, some of the other ones. These ones you can see are in a smaller space. I've just made the background of the chart the same as the background of the whole layout. So that's why you don't see uh, all the spaces taken up. So that's kind of one downside of it. So let's take a look at how these actually work. So what you've got here is a bunch of global fields laid on top of each other. We're going to ungroup this and just move one of these. You'll see that there's a global field. There's the X bar global field. And I'll undo it so it goes back to where it was. And then go into Manage Database here real quick. You can see there's that global text field. Then, of course, we have a global field for our chart here called X chart, which we'll see later. So all we did was put a pipe character in there, but as you know that, they're going to have separation between each pipe. You know, it's like typing. You're going to have uh, some separation between each letter. So what we had to do is, you know, keep, uh, you know, uh, duplicating. In fact, I use Smart Duplicate here to do this so that there's a whole bunch of them right next to each other. So you just Smart Duplicate across until, and usually with sample data so you can see when the bar is complete. Uh, I think we, do we have sample data turned on here? Let's turn it on real quick. You can see how I can see with a bar here complete um, once I've gotten enough of those. If I take one of these away, you see how there's starting to be little spaces in there? So that's how I knew when I was done with that one. And we'll go and turn that off. And again, the, the downside of, of this method is the font. So watch out about that. It really is not a realistic uh, solution. Um, except unless you're using it on one platform, but you know how that works sometimes. Use it on one platform, then all of a sudden, you go, oh, somebody likes it, and they want to use it. Another. You know, you'll have problems with it. I would probably try to avoid it at all costs. Now, the conditional formatting one here has a whole bunch of buttons here, and the reason for that is if you go into conditional formatting here, you'll see that what we have here is the fill color set to green. You can set it to any color you want. But you can see there's a, a calculation in here. And we have to look at the script to see what's going on. 
how that's being uh, dupli or, or updated. But if we go to the next one over and look at conditional formatting, you'll see it's at 48 and so on. So what we did was we turned each one of these conditional formattings on using that dollar sign status. So the script sets that and it says, okay, well, when it's less than that, turn on. If it's greater than that, don't turn on. And so you can you can see how we won't have any problems with fonts here. And but it's a little bit chunkier because the the, the spaces are, you know it's gonna it, you have to make the buttons small. I made them a little bit bigger than I normally would. If you really wanted to spend a lot of time, you could put you know two or three times as many of those across here and have it move in smaller chunks. But I didn't think uh, it really was worth the time. Now when you're creating this, there's a little bit of difficulty in doing this. If you go ahead and duplicate, right? and get it moved in just the right spot. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then move it up, 9. I think I got it over 1 too many. And then you go ahead and set the conditional formatting, let's say, to 50. Click OK, and then duplicate again. It'll offset the exactly the same amount. So that's one way you can save a bunch of time in setting this up. So you don't have to sit around and go, okay, line it up, okay, you know, it could be, you know, you got to use the tools that are available to you to, to really make this efficient. And granted, you know, once you set these up, you can copy and paste them from file to file, So, but it's the initial setup you want to avoid all that time. Now the chart version, you can see here's the big background. See, this is as small as I can make it. This actually um, works with the script as well. So a script determines how big the chart is. And so let's look at the settings here. We can actually use sample data if we want, or we can use actual data, it's up to you. Let's look at every section here. So we'll start with the data source. Make sure it's the current found set and individual record data. Pretty simple to set up there. Then you really have your choice of, of settings here on as far as colors and font size and all that stuff. Really not much to do here. But when you get to the chart, I did remove the title because it took up space, so you can put it in there if you wanted to made sure I chose a bar chart, not a column, right? I put the global field in the data for the x-axis, only need one, and then I decided to go ahead and put the major ticks in here, minor ticks, the minimum and maximum so I knew how long it was going to be and have a 0, 100. It just seemed to work right when I was doing this. And pretty much nothing else needed to be set. So it's pretty easy to set up right, you know, from the start. And the great thing is, again, you can come in here into the styles and set it to any color you want so it looks different very quickly. Whereas it's going to be a little more difficult to do that with the conditional formatting. Not so bad with the pipes, but I think as far as ease of implementation, I think the charting one is going to be the best. So let's take a look at the scripts. We'll start with the progress bar pipe consistent. Again, these are simulations. What you're going to do is put this, in this case, this set field in every place where you want the progress bar to increase in your script, because you're going to have a big long script, you're not necessarily going to have a loop. And so you might set it, uh, you know, this one says it consistently, but you might uh, set, you know, uh, the, you know, the X bar to two uh, pipes this time, five pipes the next time because it's a longer thing, and so on and so on. But you can see what I've done here to simulate this is I told it to pause. 0.1 seconds and then uh, exit the loop once we get you know greater than uh, 23 uh, you know you know bars in there and that was just I just did that by trial and error to figure out how many bars needed to go in there I made the size of you know uh, progress bar I wanted and then tried it out and kept saying okay 23 works out perfectly now the progress bar the realistic one uh, just put some randomness into it you can see that there's the random value there and then we multiply it by five and then do the integer on it so it gives us an integer from 0 or I should say 1 to 5 here because we're adding 1. So that's a pretty cool little technique to to get an, uh, a random uh, value. And so it just picks the number of pipes 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 from the left based on what number results here. And then we have some randomness on this uh, pausing 
and then I figured out how many, uh, you know, the length of the the X bar and stuff like that, how big it had to be, and and uh, you know, uh, you know, because I had to do 18 this time rather than 23 because if it's 18, then I'm going to do the last set field, uh, you know, uh, of five, so it goes exactly to the end. And, and again, you won't have this issue when you're doing it with your uh, your script because you're going to set them and make sure it comes out to 23 uh, throughout the entire script. So pretty much it's uh, a bunch of the same, but this is a set variable here instead. There's that dollar sign status. And I simply add one to it and pause for 0.1 seconds. And the real life one, we just put some randomness in there. I did uh, seven this time, uh, you know, I, and I could go up to uh, 50 uh, in the, you know, the, the length of that conditional formatting. So pretty much a, a lot of the same once you start looking at these. But the big difference here is that this is what you'd stick inside your script and set it to a certain amount. You know, set the dollar sign status to one if you want one, you know, one progress to go. Seven if you want seven to go. Five if you want five to go. And just keep adding to it and you do dollar sign status plus that so you appended to it so it kept increasing that number. And then there's your progress bar. It's pretty simple too. We simply go ahead and set our X chart to, remember it's going to be in percentages here, okay? So 0.02 each time. So went up, you know, basically it has to get up to one to be 100%. So we're basically doing two uh, bars here each time. You can change that, and, and but this would be the step that you put inside your script, and you'd say, okay, set it to 0 .0, you know, x chart plus 0 .02 or x chart plus 0 .05, depending on how much you wanted to uh, increase. And then the real life one, just some more uh, randomness here, and uh, did all this stuff. It wasn't very complex, not very important really to the whole tip. What's most important, again, is the set field, the set variable, and then this set field. That's what makes it, and that's what you need to grab from here and put into your script. So, maybe you'll find use for these, maybe you won't, it's all up to you. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed uh, doing these progress bars and trying to get them to work cross-platform. And, uh, you know, hopefully you, uh, you know, understand, you know, when to use them and, and don't abuse them. You don't just put them in there because you can. It doesn't really make sense. Put them in there when you really make sense.